Mark? You definitely can. It's Sonia Schmutz, and I am. So thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It's really lovely to be here. I come from a region of Nikola Tesla. Without him, we probably wouldn't be in a chilly room outside 40 degrees uh, Delhi. So thank for that uh, great genius of mankind. Tesla was also a person, not only a futurist, who, the one who would build the future, but also the one who could see pretty much in the future. And he believed that the future is female. In January 1926, imagine, practically 100 years ago, at the age of 68, he predicted that we will communicate by simple West Pocket equipment. Do you have one? What is your simple West Pocket equipment? It's our iPhones and Samsungs and all of that that we have. Also, he said we will travel with aircrafts so that will be unmanned, and we will use heat received from the sun to convert to human use. That was really visionary. But what he had, so we live in the world that his words um, said. But he also predicted that a new sex order is coming with a female as a superior. In his words, he said that he believes in awakening of the intellect of women. So that intellect has been awakened. All over our countries, we could see that girls are getting more educated than boys. And yet, we don't live in any country in the world where the situation would be fair enough for men and for women. I personally don't believe in gender superiority, neither female or male. What I believe is in gender equality. And what happens when we have that? Well, there are great minds that have already calculated, like McKinsey and OECD and United Nations. They calculated that if we would reach gender parity, we would have like $28 trillion more of worth. So there is a huge money, there is a huge quality of life in getting more balance. Doesn't it sound logical? And yet, why don't we have it? Well, since I was invited to this lecture, um, I thought of, well, probably gender equality has something to do with it and the way that leadership is done today. And we tend to think that leadership is gender neutral. But thinking of it, we find out actually it's not. The cornerstones of it are male. And what we do as women and also men, we just adapt to what already is there. Um, since I come from a business world, and before that bell rings for me, I'll just shorten it to, to an illustration. When many male uh, leaders that I talk with, and, and I ask them, why don't they have more women in their, in their companies and, and other decision-making positions? And they said, well, we tried to promote them, but in the end, we gave up. They offered promotions to women, and what do women often say? They say no, and after some time, men just give up, they don't understand it, they don't, they don't understand why don't we take the, the leadership positions. And they sort of start believing that it's either because we are scared or that we are just not ambitious enough. It is logical, reasonable, but actually it's not. And I ask them, well, look, you're a leader. You have to look at the promotions, at the promotion as a product. So imagine if you would have to sell your product and nobody would want to buy it? Would you just say, well, too bad? Or would you go out there, ask what's wrong, and then try to fix it? So why don't leaders do that the same? They have to adapt their leadership style. They have to understand what is it different for women, and why do women say no, and what would have to be eliminated, which obstacles, so that they would say yes. Because as a leader, you have to put the right people in the right place or you will end up with second and third rate people where they shouldn't be. And half of those positions would have to be filled with women, or otherwise we cannot say we have a balanced leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Sonia.